Uh, all right, uh, well, welcome back to Super Metroid Eris. This happened a little faster than I expected to, to return to it, but uh, Simon reached out and was like, hey, I really enjoyed the, the videos. The hack seems interesting. I understand, like, it can be kind of a weird, like, I mean, you said it yourself mostly. It's like just an interesting idea and wanted to kind of see, hey, if you're, if you're open to it, can I help commentate with you for a live stream or something? And so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I did think that it did look uh, like interesting in the sense that, yeah, you see the looks is the main point, right? Yeah. And uh, there are lots of cool ideas repurposing. Didn't always uh, hit the landing, as one says. Um, but uh, also, apart from the looks thing, uh, the uh, gameplay and the design and where the items are is also like not bad and, and i was interested so I yeah thought, why not take a look at myself would be really cool for the opportunity and thank you for it yeah well one thing i know is um i mentioned it briefly in the video uh the the other ones this guy you can tell he's very much like inspired by metroid prime at, at points and, like the mm -hmm. way that certain things are done and um there is a whole map of the game that has room names for everything like it's separate because the technology didn't exist like it does in subversion now yeah yeah you mentioned that um but like i put it off to the side of my mon uh, my other monitor so if like there's ever a point where you see a, an interesting room and want to like know what the guy thought like the game uh, the name of it was like go go ahead and just like i'll i'll scroll over and see what uh what they say uh, that's a cool idea. Well, I mean, where are we right now, actually? Like, this is, um, this area is... Uh, it is... Eris Station. So it's split up by worlds. This is Eris Station specifically. And inside mm -hmm. here is, uh, we are in just the main central station room. Like, I think what I will do is I'm just going to throw it into uh, our call, and I'll let you take a look at this map as well. And like, yeah, we, we can, can talk about the names to, to the viewers as well as we as we go. But, exactly. Yeah. Why not? I got it open on the second screen as well. So, yeah, I'll just take a look if I'm able to follow along. <laughs> yeah, it might be a little hard to say where we are at a given moment, but like, I can uh, point out certain things if need be. Sure. But yeah, like being in a stream now, I feel a lot less like. I treat my streams and my, my recorded videos a little bit differently, like, I still treat everything fairly casually because you want to have fun doing it, but the the streams are a lot more laid back, I find, because there's less expectation of progress, there's less expectation of, like, constant commentary or just that sort of interesting... Uh, making jokes, the same sort of stuff that, like, we normally do. Right. Even though I'm very good at constant commentaries, at least talking, <laughs> if I talk too much. <laughs> yeah, and uh, there are still probably jokes to be found. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no. I've always really liked uh, these um, background tiles with the cubes floating in uh, 3D. Uh, yeah. They are from the Dragon Boss room, I think, right? Yeah, they are. The one thing that I thought was really fun with them in Subversion was using them in the space station right at the start of the game and letting them float because, well, it's kind of like a zero gravity storage. Yeah, and I, I do think that they are used very well here and in more rooms and uh, it integrates fairly well into this bizarre architecture you see here. Yeah, like this whole place itself, this is the big room towards the top of the... Oh, I've switched, I've switched uh, images on accident. This is um just the archaeologic study, apparently. We're up in the, no the top oh, yeah, number eight. Yeah, yeah, I see it now. Yeah. Actually, yeah, you can see, like, there's no mini-map, but you can see, just generally speaking, where we have gone. A lot of the top yeah. parts and... On the surface. So this is the North Stargate entry. Yeah. And yeah, here also the floating cubes, it's cool. Or these guys who have colored basically like the same as the environment, yeah. so they look like they're an extension. The, the first, 
the time I saw this room, I really didn't expect the slanted surfaces to be traversable. Uh, yeah. But uh, of course they are. Uh, that's one of those things where you're like, ah, I see where some of the conveyance issues might come from, but also it does look cool, so... Yeah, and I like the Stargate thing and how it sends you up and down here. Mm, I didn't even realize that. Yeah, that's really cool. It looks neat, but the visual language is not very coherent. And yeah, that is the big um, flaw with this one. As we've discussed in the thread uh, before, a lot of difficulty in this comes from what's solid, what's not, and how can I tell? And thankfully, this is something that the the guy learned as uh, as he went, not for this hack necessarily, but his next one, um, Vitality. Mm -hmm. I've been, um, I'm considering playing that hack, but i um, not entirely sure just yet. I want to play something else, but it, it, it's a, I would think it's a better overall hack, though there's like a lot of nostalgia and this hack certainly, as, as mentioned, has a major influence on the community. Like, the way that this all is done, I'm gonna play around with layering here for a second. Like, you can see some of this is all done. Oh, this is actually not a very good room uh, to show that. This is a pretty standard room. Ah, so this is pedestrian, basically. It's just like Vanilla does it. <laughs> yeah, so the idea is basically, you know, in most, in most games or whatever, you're, you're gonna have the layer, layer one is kind of what you usually interact with. Layer two is usually backgrounds and such. And yep. in uh, in this game, a lot of times he uh, mixes them to achieve the uh, the like the layering effects. It's weird. I thought layer two was for moving platforms. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want that spacer for sure. Yeah, that does make sense that you would want it. Um, but so the tra the the layering tricks are often used for. Uh, achieving that that extra detail that parallax scroll kind of effect and um and i did notice that the super nintendo does have a, a lot of really cool tricks that it can use for that um i did notice that the first time when i was playing uh, link to the past emulated accidentally hit one of the function keys in the emulator and was like oh god, oh god where is all the mist gone or all the enemies and i was like ah that's how it's done that's interesting yeah and uh, i really like looking under the hood of games like that yeah it's a lot of fun to mess around with the layers and just kind of see how it's done rom hacking gave me such an appreciation for how games were made because of just like learning more and more about the little the intricacies of how it all worked even back then. Yeah, no, that's great. Uh, that's also something that fascinates me oh, a lot I about. Died. Oh, oh, I didn't even notice that. <laughs> I did not was realize low. that my health was. Oh goodness. So did you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I um, can't die like this. Why? Well, surely I, I can this die. <laughs> this uh, this message. <laughs> okay. Um, well, time to time to rush back. I do want that no spacer. Problem. Just, just cut to <laughs> where you last <laughs> left off. Uh, NGTVSS in in chats. Hi, by the way. Uh, just said that it does look neat, but the visual language is not very coherent. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I would agree that it is not very coherent, but I feel like it's um, a room by room basis. I, I think uh, the author clearly. It was like, okay, so I have these blue tiles here and I have different tiles uh, from somewhere around the game, which I can also color blue cool. And now I can make a, a, one room that looks like a laboratory from it. That's all blue. It's like, that's yeah. nice. And then the next room is all green. And then the next room is like based on the floating cubes and they are a certain color, like some beige. So everything else conforms to that. Um, and then you have the big issue that in this room, uh, everything that is light blue is go through. And in the next room, everything that is black with a beige outline is go through. And yeah, in the next room, nothing is go through. It's like... It's a little inconsistent a lot of times, especially yeah. because the graphics are being used for detailing most of, the, most of what's going on. <laughs> Sounds like the song is all about the blue guy and all his stuff is blue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is one of my favorite songs of all time, by the way. Oh, yeah? 
Yeah, I really like it. I used to listen to it um, when it was current, so in the early 2000s, uh, <laughs> in, in, in the car radio. And whenever it came on, I was like, turn it on, turn it to higher. It's so good. Man. And uh, I, I used to be an all oldies kind of guy because like listening to the music my mom listens to 70s, at most some 80s. Um, but Blue was like the song that told me that, oh yeah, modern electronic music can be just really catchy and awesome and I love it a lot. Yeah, I ended up like skipping out on like I, I like i was born in like early 90s so like i was at the exact time to get that sort of stuff as well but i ended up skipping out on most of like the music that my my peers were listening to in the in the 2000s and yes yeah, same because i didn't want to be one of the cool guys that listened to all of the current stuff <laughs> <laughs> i just didn't even care i don't even know why i just kind of didn't i don't even know if it was a cool thing because i certainly wasn't <laughs> I, I was a bit of a contrarian asshole as a kid, so ah. that's one thing. But also, like, I genuinely didn't enjoy it that much. Yeah. Like, like current pop, pop stuff and so on. I mean, I still don't. But of course, that doesn't mean that all music that is coming out is bad. It's just because you don't like listening to what's on the radio. It doesn't mean that modern music isn't for you. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't get that as a kid, of course. I was, um, yeah, because I ended up skipping out on a lot of it, I ended, didn't really develop music taste until I got older and like was starting to you know, go to work, go drive back and forth. I tend to listen to the radio because I, I have a car that doesn't have any kind of um, support for, uh, like, oh god. They do a whole you, you energy You do take tank. a lot of damage from these, yeah. It's a whole energy tank. Yeah, oof. But, um, yeah, so basically, I would just uh, listen to the radio and, ah, uh, now we're, we're, oh god. Off screen sniping? Oh, that's cool, yeah. Yeah, I gotta watch out because these guys like to keep firing. Ye yeah. yeah, 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 that's exactly where you got killed the last time. Good I'm dodge, worried that dodge. I'm gonna get hit by it while I'm in the tunnels. You gotta press on. Even if I get it, I might still die, and that's gonna be the worst. Like I should have killed that guy. <laughs> I, I should have, but he went away. Mm, I mean, now it's not firing anymore, so that's good. Other tension. Yeah, but I'm gonna okay. I'm, I'm gonna laugh if I get sniped on the side as I try to get out of here. Mm. Fall down to the right, maybe. Think you can climb to the right? It's out this way, I guess. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, obviously. All right, asshole. Sure. Nope, he got me. Ah, for fuck's sake. <laughs> uh, oh, that's not gonna work. Oh my god, that worked. Oh. Uh, Did you just like phase through it by the rebind? Oh no. No. Oh. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna admit, avoid this one. Damn it. Nope. Uh, Oh well. But at least I saved closer. <laughs> well, what I was getting to self fulfilling prophecy there, like Nostradamus. <laughs> yeah, really. Now, what I was getting to is, um, so my. I basically developed a lot of taste for uh, 80s music and stuff. And to this day, I, I like to listen to a lot of 80s. I really love those crunchy synth sounds. It's funny because I used to think that the 80s were just terrible um, because <laughs> as a kid, again, I didn't really like the stuff that was playing on the radio and it's kind of still playing on the radio. In German radio, it's probably very different from what the selection of other people. They're just playing the same stuff over and over and over again and always like, oh yeah, I love the 80s, the 80s will never die. It's like, yeah, you're making sure of that. I'm, I'm hearing that. <laughs> and uh, it's very, very repetitive and uh, I did discover a lot of really good bands from the 80s, which I really like. Um, bands, artists, uh, Alphaville, I really like. Nick Kershaw, The Riddles, just like super catchy. It was super great. Mm -hmm. And I unironically enjoy extremely catchy stuff, like Blue, uh, for example. Um, uh, but uh, you don't hear that that often on the radio, and you always hear like Bon Jovi and uh, yeah. Sheryl Crow, Celine Dion, which is a little bit more, more modern, I guess. It's not 80s, 90s, but still, um, it's just that all the time on repeat and uh, get sick of it really quick. Snipe it. You nice. didn't fire. Yeah. 
And if you know that they're coming, you can kind of anticipate them a little bit, I feel like. Yeah. Agro range abuse. Getting Dark Souls in here. <laughs> there you go. Another one of those rooms where I'm like, the water doesn't really add anything. It's just doing it to be obnoxious. Ah, uh, crap. I, no, I don't I, uh, have You're out of missiles, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Can you hit them with a charge beam? Maybe. Uh, yes. Yes. Nice. Uh -oh. I, did re I think I remarked on that in the thread, but uh, you you just don't use the charge beam ever. And uh, I'm personally, I'm a, I'm a huge charge guy. I always hold down the, the weapon button if I, if I can do it in any game that has a charge beam. Yeah. I, I it's mostly in a, I want to say <laughs> that it's like an, noise. an efficiency yes. thing a lot of times because it, it super metroid is not like the best balance to with it early on charge beam is amazing but like mm. later on you're you can usually fire your beam fast enough to just take out most of the threats that come your way because it's true a, and i mean you do want to have that extra shot already flying when you freeze the enemies yeah because um, charge beam does three times the damage and uh if you don't like if you've already got a strong beam you can often fire three shots in the time that it would take to use uh, to, to charge a thing like yeah. for me it's always like the idea of just killing an enemy in one shot oh sure and then you don't have to deal with shooting while dodging it's like you shoot two shots but then they fire so you dodge and they are not dead but if you see an enemy you immediately release the charge that you have been building up anyway previously so your first shot is triple the damage yeah because no, i always charge that's that's a good way to think about it and i just like don't always no sure i mean that's just first of all personal choice of course you don't always want to press that uh, thumb down and i've gotten better about not always doing that because it is like yeah. first of all strain and certain secondly it's not very efficient because most of the time you don't need it and then you've also and got like also, the sound effects and stuff. And it's like, I've yeah, that's a big issue. This. Yeah, I'm fortunately somewhat immune against that. Um, but uh, the second thing is uh, also, what was I getting at? Uh, just controller setup. Like Super Metroid is just, you have to claw grip a lot if you want to charge and run and angle your shots as well. Um, yeah. It's just not very well set up for that it's much easier in the more modern metroid so yes in super in fact they don't charge that often because it's just super cumbersome i love the dash Mega Man button Zero x is amazing because i just put dash on the shoulder buttons and then yeah. no problem like i love the dash button in uh, these games or in super but it, it it does contribute to the whole claw grip thing like and i'm sure that i have mine set up in a way that other people don't like i do fire on y jump on b x is my dash and then a i have as my weapon select instead of the I way that it... Do it pretty similar actually maybe weapon select is on select but um a main weapon on y and jump on on b is for me that's standard yeah but so it's just kind of I'm I'm just at this point I'm just used to it. I used to play this on keyboard, like huh. before I got a, con a USB controller. So I used to play hacks and all that on keyboard, and uh, that was a uh, interesting. Mm, I believe, um, but I think many people do and still play on keyboard. Yeah, like, I do you know that uh, watching some of the um, Super Mario World ROM hacks um, or Super Mario Brothers X uh, fan game stuff where uh, the, the let's player sometimes is like, uh, maybe even you, it's like, oh yeah, this this person who made the hack play tested it obviously with a keyboard because this jump is much easier if you have a keyboard because <laughs> you can hold up and to the right super easily. Um, or you never slip up because if you hold down for a millisecond, then this special move of this character they coded is going to kill you immediately. Whereas uh, if you don't accidentally press down because it's a completely separate button and not a D pad, uh, this will never be an issue. Yeah. And, uh, that's interesting to me. Yeah, I think. Yeah, now that you have the space, you can actually just hit these. Oh, right? I, should hit the I should take this extra save. <laughs> yes, you should. <laughs> 
So at this point, I think what we... So the, the 2012 version of this hack that we're playing right now is uh, less open than the original was, probably for a good reason, because the original was pretty open and people were getting lost all the time. Like, mm -hmm. it's not a bad thing that you, you can't go to places that you can't uh, do things in. Yeah, I but... think that's a very delicate balance for any game to take. It's like, how much player freedom do you want versus how much player guidance do you need? Yeah. And uh, it's like, the thing is also for a more modern hack, if this is in, um, when did it originally came out? 2010? 2009 for the original. Nine, yeah, exactly. It's like 2009, what's your competition like? It was Wrong nothing hacks. like this. Exactly. Like your your so, main your main competition was probably redesign, which had been like three years prior. Like there were hacks in in the in the years between, of course. But like this was kind of if we're talking about like milestones within Metroid hacking, I would say like redesign. Um, after that, there's probably one or two more that I'm forgetting about in the 2007 2008 years, but um genuinely redesign and then like Eris was kind of the big one that everyone remembered right but then you can imagine if you make this game and you know this is going to be big at some point you have to have a pride that this is going to be the hack of the year for many people then this is the one hack that people play in 2009 because most people who are into hacking have already finished redesign five exactly. times and they are like super hungry for Metroid content and they're gonna get this and they're gonna be like, this is amazing. And it doesn't even matter to me that I have to retraverse the world five times over to find progress because I find a little bit of bits and pieces here and there. And they just treat this like a childhood game, or, ideally. And at least when you're traversing, like, again, for the, for the age, like, this was, um, it just looked so nice. Exactly. That it's like a, a selling point is that you don't get bored going through these rooms again and again because you will notice more and more details. But nowadays, you are not only competing with other more competent Metroid hacks. If you are like saying, I'm making a hack now and it's super open and people might get lost, but that's okay. They can just explore more. People might just get bored and say, okay, I'm just going to play a different hack because there's like five zero mission hacks I haven't tried yet, three fusion hacks, mm -hmm. a randomizer, um, and also I wanted to try that Link to the Past thing. Exactly. Or anything else. Or, you know, an official Metroidvania that might be forced by some mandate or a more business-oriented thing to uh, just be player-guided and more accessible to everyone in the first place. Yeah. And so you end up with instances where, like, this feels old. It has some older design sensibilities to it. But at the same time, it's just... There's something about it. It's the, there's this window back into the way things were. Even with this update. Like, it's still just... It's... it's somebody, um... Somebody commented recently, I can't remember if it was in the th one of my threads or or if it was on, on a YouTube comment, but just like appreciating the history of like this and going through and talking about uh, like the way things are, how having the context of being someone who was in the scene from the beginning or close to it. And uh, like yeah, it's 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 a lot of fun like being able to share that kind of knowledge in here and giving like I said the context behind why things were the way they were even if it isn't like the best reason like it's like oh this was it because that's just how it was and you know it's covering for a bad decision but but still that often that is just the, the unvarnished truth right and uh, it's very very valuable that you can give these specific insights here because you don't have to guess because for many games um they are like okay so why are playstation 3 games so brown and gray it's right. like oh yeah that's just the style at the time and it's like okay but is that true for every game was this one specifically bad was it called out for being bad at the time 
Um, is there a reason behind that? Uh, did that follow a trend? Um, did like a game come out a year before, which this one is aping? Uh, and so on. It's like this is a context that many more people have because those were mainstream games and thousands of people played them than um, this one here, for example. Right. Uh, and that means it's much easier to analyze these kind of game design trends, flaws, ideas, and so on. But for ROM hacks, it's much harder, I feel like. So this is why I always love following these things, especially from people like you, um, who just were there all the time and could follow those trends in real time. And I love like visiting ROM hacks because they are a window into the mind of somebody and the way that they wish to like design mm -hmm. and i always find that super fascinating uh actually i do not want to be in this room yet there are metroids in here <laughs> this, uh -oh. is, yeah. this is on the bottom right of the map this is the big yeah. room that's the big dark blue room with two on it uh cobalt Mountain. Oh, yeah. yeah yeah i see it now cobalt no. mountain crystal caves think so? No, it's not. It's no, wait, uh, uh, Phase on Gardens. Summit? Phase on Gardens. Ah, right. Sorry. There's like 20 shades of blue here. Yeah. That's, yeah. Phase on Gardens. Yeah. Oh, wait. Yeah, I mean, Phase on that kind of nailed the aesthetic. I see it now. Uh, I was wondering what all the flashing was about, but now I get it. Um, but yeah, it doesn't seem very uh, welcoming. <laughs> no. Let's not. But because Again. like I'd need an ice beam. Mm. Mm. Makes sense, makes sense. It just don't. But yeah, I mean you can go down here anyway, so that's fine. Yeah. But the actual um, uh, the actual progress that we want is uh up this elevator right now in this horrible um, flesh area. Up, not down. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> that must be the phase in hollows in the great hive tree then. Yeah. Oh, I was wondering if uh, the author was going to use these eyes for more than just decoration in that one room where you pass by a bunch. Right, but uh, regarding game design trends as well, uh, something that's also always interesting about ROM hacks is, uh, I think, a general idea is that people are, of course, a fan of the game they're ROM hacking for, but there is always an element of, I could do this better. And I always think it's it's really interesting to see what things are kept as unquestionably part of the game and what things are like, oh, yeah, you know what, I think uh, we were not going to do that. Um, I see that a lot with Mega Man fan games, for example, where I'm, of course, a, a big Mega Man guy here. Um, and it's always like every Mega Man fan game, at least a lot of them, just is like, yeah, of course you need to have Quickman lasers. Of course, you need to have Yoko blocks, the vanishing uh, yeah. on off blocks, in case people don't know that. And it's like, personally, if I was making a ROM hack of Mega Man or a fan game or whatever, I would just not. Like, I think they are garbage, both of these things, and I would just never include them. Uh, but it, it feels like there is a lot of reverence in the community for these. Um, and I personally, I don't get it, but I'm not going to like tell people to do it. <laughs> Yeah. Why, how would I do that anyway? Oh, good energy um, tank. Oh, that's very. We're valuable. gonna need this. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the, it's always very interesting to me um, that what people keep and what people cut out. Yeah, and that whole thing. that whole I think I can do it better is literally how we started doing our whole awful emblem thing years and years ago, and is still ongoing. We are like mm -hmm. almost. I, I'm gonna say almost done, but that's still like. We're in like, I would put us at like the last 25% of the game, honestly. Mm -hmm. And like, we haven't had an update, a public update about it in a long time, but it, it is still on the way. Uh, still, it's just, yeah, that whole thing was some manner of hubris and uh, some manner of just... Oh, what happened to Spores? <laughs> yeah. We're gonna play this as carefully as I can because this area, um, this is probably the best argument for not playing the original at this point mm -hmm. um, because this whole area is pretty tough. I mean, this already looks like I'd be going, yeah, you know what, no. <laughs> Yes, I, I already hate Spore Spawn in the original. It's both boring and obnoxious. 
and uh, it, it's always mystifying to me why people who make a ROM hack don't agree, because it, it can't be fun to you to play Sporespawn, right? Like, it's not a good boss in the original. Yeah, and, but the problem is that he ends up um, creating, like, an, uh, just a way for... He's one of the mini-bosses, you know? He's... Like, none of the bosses in the game are particularly hard for players anymore. There's very few ways to make them actually challenging. And, like, yeah, Sportsman is probably, like, the one you want to deal with the least. Because there's, like, no good way to handle him. But he is there. His uh, status as mini-boss can, in fact, um, inform certain uh, designs. Because, oh man, I lost that oh, scene. Oh shit. No, it's all right. I wanted that health and I got greedy. Yeah, I got it. But you can no, use his death. Following. You can use his death trigger to open up uh, certain types of locked doors, so it's good for progression. But yeah, I don't know. He's probably the worst of them, and making a fast sports bond fight is probably preferable for most people. Yeah, that, that's one of those things where I'm like, I, I feel like the first thing I would go and look at when I would want to improve uh, Super Metroid, uh, which is a very, very good game, but even the best games have flaws. I look at what kind, what parts of Super Metroid did I personally as a player find obnoxious first time and still don't look forward to the next time yeah. and the third time. At Sporespawn for me is top of the list. It's like, this is not a fun boss. This is just awful. Even if you know exactly what you're doing, it takes forever. And uh, oh, that's cool. Um, and for example, also like uh, the, the farming aspect, I would try to mitigate that because it's not fun. We just put more missile stations everywhere, make the recharging instantaneous or I don't know. Oh, immediate another mini boss. Yeah, that's the this is why this part is hard because it's a double double mini boss fight now. Hey, that's Bakun kind does, of interesting. <laughs> he does not have as much health as he normally would, but his arena is dangerous. Mm -hmm. Or he, you know, he hits decently hard, but thankfully, yeah. I handle it very well. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm happy that it. <laughs> but you yeah, didn't have so to redo the entire thing again. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a double boss gauntlet basically, and that's challenging. Right, but I always feel like if if you are actually proud of your ability as a designer you should be striving for something that elevates these these bad aspects like what if you made sportsball always vulnerable for example like there is no reason why i have to give him that oh it, it takes forever to open up pattern yeah you should be skilled enough to pull this off in the code i mean of course maybe i'm like okay this is completely impossible actually it must be super difficult to hack this i've but never or, um, um i've never looked into like how sports bond works or anything like that because a lot of things you can do a lot with the the, the um just the the bits that define uh enemies and mm -hmm. i'm not I, because he's a mini boss i assume he's got more to him than a regular enemy would like you can make regular enemies completely invulnerable to beams and such but He's got to be somewhat different. Most bosses tend to be. Were both of these super missiles just completely hidden? They are, but this is your reward room after beating everything. So it's... it's They are at least um, visible. As... Uh, yeah, these these uh, thorn things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they are at least kind of called out. Everyone. Yeah, no, it makes sense now. But I, I didn't originally see all of the spore thing because, yeah. you know, they blend in really well. I was like, ah, oh, yeah, wait, wait, wait. He's actually actively going for these specific corners. There we go. I think it's just yeah. the three. There's three in here. And yes, you only get one per pack, but... nice that they give you three at least. Yeah. And then you can get yourself out and back to the safe station. Cool. Uh, but but yeah, I mean, I, I don't know for Super Metroid, but uh, like if we go back to the Mega Man examples, like, okay, you want to have a, a Quick Man laser section, like, why why make them instant kill, for example? Yeah. Just make them deal one third health. It's still a huge punishment, but it's not nearly as bad as they are in the original, because everybody hates dying instantly. Like, you can't tell me that people actually like Quick Man. 
<laughs> so it's like, that's that's the thing. Like, just try and improve upon the original. Like, that should be your main goal, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, and I mean, obviously, this author uh, put the emphasis on improving how the game looks, and um, maybe didn't even have uh, this this kind of idea behind that they wanted to improve the gameplay per se just yeah change. at the time at the time there was really not that much in terms of the changes to gameplay although there are small things like respin in midair right and, right, right. Um, yeah. because it's uh, momentum. obnoxious in the original that you can't do it yeah. was, was that a fake power up uh no that charge beam is um meant as a uh, as an indicator to you that that's what you need to break the rocks But like the other thing that it has, this is minor as well, is um, it keeps momentum when you uh, when you run, jump, and land. Mm -hmm. It doesn't reset. Oh, that's also quite nice. I do think that uh, Super Metroid, the engine is quite clunky at points. Uh, it's a little bit hard for me to get back to. I sadly played Super Metroid relatively late in my Super Nintendo playing days. So it's not a game that I fully had as a kid every day, uh, yeah. grind it out, and uh, really get get used to the intricacies. Um, and uh, therefore, I, I might be a little bit less nostalgia tinted, a little bit more critical about its idiosyncrasies. And yeah. I soon got Fusion after, and it's like Fusion just plays so much better. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of the opposite in the way that uh, I came to the games because mm -hmm. um, I only played Prime when it came out. That was my first introduction to, uh, to the series, and I absolutely loved it. It's still my favorite game to this day. But shortly Prime is after- absolutely amazing. Oh, so yeah. good. Shortly after I played Fusion, because I was like, okay, now I, I love this series, I need to play more. And so what ended up happening after that was I got Fusion, and I think I played the original through Prime and the unlocks that you could do, because I had the, the, the GameCube Game Boy Advance cable. Yeah, I actually also did that a uh, little bit, and then I realized that if you respawn, you respawn with 30 health and uh, <laughs> no missiles, and I was like, okay, no. <laughs> yeah, I did beat it, but I'm pretty sure I probably used a cheat. Basically, if, if you game over in Metroid, you may as well just start over. Yeah, more or less, and just didn't care for that. It's like completely spoiled by, you know, save systems that actually save your yeah. ammo and so on. Like, nah. Thanks. <laughs> Though it is a fun game to play, so it's just, in my opinion, mostly hampered by that and a little bit of obscurity for progression, but I mean, that's fine. You just look for stuff, where to go. Um, that's perfectly acceptable for the time. And you can still have a lot of fun looking for the nooks and crannies. Yeah. Um, especially if you know a few things through cultural osmosis or have seen a Let's Play 10 years ago or so. Uh, like going through fake lava, stuff like that. And then, um, like, I only got to Super later because, like, I had a Super Nintendo growing up, but I never had this game. It was never on my radar. Oh, good. This door's open no. now. Now that we beat the uh, one of the, the one or both or whatever of those bosses, this door has opened. Well, that's very random, to be honest. Well, it was locked in one of the videos that we came to. And essentially, if you're playing a hack and you encounter a door, there's a couple of oh, ways that the you're one gonna... where you wanted to kill all the crabs in the room? Yeah, well, that's the thing. Uh, there's a couple of yeah. ways to unlock a gray door, and one of them is going to be kill a certain number of enemies in a room, and then the other is going to be, okay, well, then there must be a boss or something that I have to defeat to get in. Power bombs. Right. Yeah, no, that makes sense, uh, but if you know how the, the gray doors work, um, I, when I first played Super Metroid, I was just like, okay, stuff is just opening basically at random. And um, I never looked into the game too, too much. Uh, yeah. Myself. And thankfully, thankfully it's not like too hard to uh, to figure out as you're playing in vanilla. In hacks, you got to really start thinking, okay, what could it be? Mm. But also, I mean, uh, if you don't know where to progress, and this is the only progress spot, you're just going to walk around the map anyway, looking for 
stuff you missed and usually in the metroidvanias if you play them the first time um every time you repass through a room you might go like oh wait 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 actually there was an item here and i couldn't reach it but now i can because i have bombs Exactly. Or whatever. And like, I know just got super. At some missed. point, you're just going to be like, wait, I've never been down here. And you might not even remember that um, this door was locked before. But now you go down and it's like, huh, okay, that's weird. But I guess I can progress there. And don't question it. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like, that it's very door... easy to think, like, it should have pointed out that this door is now open. It's like, yes, for modern game design sensibilities. Or if Maybe. that door had been flashing. I don't know how it's handled mm. exactly. Mm. It might not be one of the doors that actually unlocks from the defeat of a boss. Because there are differences. Um, but whatever the case. Oh, I, re I really like this room. This is supposed <laughs> to be... Um, oh, I can't beat that. These guys are still strong. This is supposed to be the philosopher's classroom it says it's in the uh like the area on the left side of the map uh, the western ruins yes marble yes, yes. marble no, shrine yeah. yeah marble shrine exactly yeah it is and like i think it i think it works because you got all this white stone it, it is a classroom yeah that makes a lot of sense it's an auditorium and uh you even have the uh podium in the back uh so it does have that full 3D effect. Yeah. That's really cool, actually. What's the flashing crystal in the middle? Uh, we will need that. So it, as inspired by Prime, um, the game has a small uh, key hunt at the uh -huh. end. Uh, it's only four, four Chozer artifacts long, but uh, it is there. It's also funny because the key hunt is something that a lot of people despise about Prime and think it's like a black mark on the game. But I never minded it. I think it's fine because you want to go through the game anyway and look for all of the upgrades that you missed once you have your full arsenal. And uh, it's not like you can't figure out where they are. It's clearly yeah. pointed out to you. That's why... Like, oh, that's... There's so much backtracking. It's like, that's the point of the game. That's like how I felt about it as well. I really uh, never minded that backtrack because of that. Uh, like, I'm wanting to go and explore stuff anyway. Exactly. But I think that's just, a, first of all, it's a personal bias, uh, of course. So if people, if, if I were to make a hack, I might think about including a key hunt as well because I like it. Um, and then, boom. <laughs> <Ow>. Or did. <laughs> I can't uh, die like people, this. People would be like, why is Simon putting this objectively awful game design decision in here? It's like, wait, I, I just like it. It's not objectively awful. I'm sorry. I, I really <laughs> like those little those little islands in the background. Those are just like Norfair tiles superimposed on a uh, Criteria background. It like, looks really good, yeah. Yeah, they look far distant. Like, he's not amazing with his color choices and all these things, but sometimes, uh, sometimes it's pretty good. Like... Yeah, no, it's they very look evocative. hazy a little bit. Yeah, I think the biggest issue here is that the white foreground tiles are so bright that uh, they they take attention away from you. So you might not even look in the background, even though you should. They need yeah. to be more muted so that you can appreciate uh, the subtle glow of the purple islands. All right, so that guy just kind of popped over and owned me. Yeah, I missed all those shots. Wow, uh, super. Maybe. There we go. All right. Oh, he respawns. Okay, never mind. Did they respawn? I guess he did. Well, asshole move. <laughs> you should not do that. Oh, what's going on with the geometry here? Oh, and it's underwater again. This is like some under area. What is this? It's room S submerged village. It's called. Hmm. And you're good at checking these. I guess I can see that. Oh, Hi, Gamora21. Shoutouts to the chat. Hello. Those blue bugs hit hard. The flying ones. Yeah, I do think uh... I do think one uh, like downside on this hack is that he didn't really adjust enemy stats as much as he really should have. 
Like there are so some like really a late game enemy for flavor here, but it hits like a late game enemy, but you're not even in the mid game yet. Yeah, like the crabs um, can do the crabs do like 120 energy or something like that. They they hit hard, mm -hmm. and those flying and bugs as well because they're just small bug, right? Yeah, they hit strangely hard. Ooh. Yeah, clash between background and foreground. We actually just mentioned that where the foreground is just so bright that you don't even notice the uh, nice background art. Oh, we're stealing his shoes. <laughs> it, it makes sense in a way. <laughs> yeah, it's the shoes thing that you you're getting. <laughs> and of course, you get the speed boost underwater. That's cool. The House of Artisan. I like the chandelier. And it's very organic. <laughs> and this comes down to the, this is the layering effects and stuff like that. Like half of it is in the background, half of it's in the foreground. Oh, and that's how it moves like that as well, because the background layer has the wavy effect on it. Yeah, like that's an unavoidable thing, I suppose. No, no, but, but I mean, still... that is, I'm pretty sure that is intentional as well, because it they could, could be. have all of it in the foreground and then it doesn't move. But this way it looks like it's, I don't know, tressellated. Well, part it of it is it can't all... Um, can't, it can't all be in the background if you want that level of detail. Basically, by overlaying tiles, you get you get graphical combinations that are not possible without taking up way too much space within the actual graphics mm. files. And so that ends up being part of like this guy's specialty was being able to see. All right, if I lay these two graphics on top of each other, I will achieve some effect. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, here also, like the background, great. Foreground, purple column, great. This white, terrible. I actually like the white in a, in a sense. It helps for, 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 like, this area, there is really no, uh, no question on whether or not you can stand on a thing. Actually, yeah. you went through a lot of these statues that are the exact same white than others. Oh, I'm these sorry. guys respawn too. Oh, but why? Don't know. Something special mm -hmm. about this 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 dragon shrine. It must How is be his it. eye? His eye is just hanging out in the background. Oh, very very fun eye. Uh, it's kind of like a crab dragon, right? So the claws. Yeah. Yeah. Using all the uh, the Ridley stuff. Oh, that doesn't look good. Bit of a cut off here. Oh, what uh, in the side? Yeah. I mean. You, you do what you can. Oh. Ooh. Well, that's hidden. Don't worry. I'm not worried at all. You're a master at this.